So at this point, we've got uh, data being saved to a database and data being retrieved and better yet being displayed in a useful manner. So the next level is, well, let's talk about deleting data from the database and updating data from the database. <coughs> so the way we'll do this is um, I want to be able to select one of these items and then do something with it, delete it or update it. So because we've got a very basic project, it doesn't have the magic of you know jQuery Mobile and such, it's going to look plain. But once we get it into our project and add some jQuery Mobile goodness to it, it'll look nicer. But right now it's going to look a little plain. We just want it to function at the moment. We'll make it look nice a little later. So we're going to build some, some fields down at the bottom here. When you click on this row, it'll populate fields here that says, OK, you want to change BB and then change it to XYZ and save. So we're going to build some fields that will appear down here and populate once you select. Think about it when we get it to the point of our actual app. We're going to have the, the table of data, and then you're going to tap it, and then a little pop-up that then displays, OK, edit it. And then you edit it, save, and then it does it. But here it's going to look visually not that nice, but functionally it'll be nice. The way we'll do this is in addition to displaying the actual table, that's what these strings are doing right here, we also then wanted to display these fields, these input fields. So after line 69, after the end of your table there, let's add another string. Let's add another building block to this string. And here, just to keep this all apart, we'll add an HR. Anyone remember what HR is? Horizontal rule. It's just a little line, a simple line that divides the top and the bottom. This can be anything, of course, but this is just going to divide it, something visual, visual interest. Next line, we'll add another piece to the string. And the way we will do this is, again, to have an input box and um, uh, the delete button and that sort of thing. So we will <coughs> type input. This is our input field. Space. We'll add some parameters here. Input type text. So it's an input box. Single quotes here, be careful, because we've already got the double quotes around everything. We'll add placeholder text, just like we did previously, just to uh, you know, have something to show people here is where the CRN value will appear. Because the way this will work is we're going to delete, internally we're going to delete and we're going to work with a, with a document in the database always by its ID. The ID is the unique identifier, and we've chosen to use the CRN number of the class as the unique ID. And this will need an ID. We'll call it ID quotes uh, delete CRN. And then we'll do a very simple button here. We'll use the button tag, uh, the button, the button tag. We're going to create a button. There's going to be a box for the CRM. Then there's going to be a button next to it. When you press that button, it will delete the CRM. It'll delete the class. The class is defined by the CRM, <coughs> and we'll type here uh, delete class the button will say delete class. So there's a couple ways to make buttons as we know and we've been seeing the way via jQuery mobile that we can put uh, you know an href data role equals button and it's a button. We don't have jQuery mobile at the moment so we'll just use a plain old button tag but this also needs an ID so we can reference it via JavaScript and we'll call this um, ID equals um, etn delete This is our button to delete. The 
let's just see if, if we're on the right track. Save it and run it. Doesn't do anything yet. Let's save it and run it and let's see if that delete button appears and its corresponding box show classes and we'll have the HR and then we have a, a field here where first we're gonna type it ourselves then we'll auto populate it but here doesn't do anything yet of course but that's what it should look like an input box let's say I wanted to delete class X so I would type X and delete it that functionality doesn't work yet of course but we're building toward it Can you give us to your yes it's kind of a long one, but here's what we've got so far. <clears throat> so what we want here is We want we want a way for us to click the button and then delete the class based on the CRM. So let's go. This has all been inside of show table class. Show table of classes. Notice this has do, been doing a lot. But now we need to jump out of the show table of classes. And actually, what we forgot to do, remember, do our end show table of classes. Line 73, before we get too far off, we should have added end show table of classes. Because when these things get pretty long, you're going to forget what is that ending? And you're going to have to go back to find it. That's at the end of our show table of classes comment. <clears throat> Next line. We're going to set up the ability to press the button. Now here, here's uh, something that you would not realize until you until you start doing it. We've been using the structure like line 52 where there's some button on the screen that we can click on to run a function. This won't work exactly the same way because this works when that button exists at the moment we run our code. There is a button called btn show classes when we do when we run it the html has created it back here. That button exists. Therefore, the javascript can reference it. What we've just done down here is we've dynamically created a button. It doesn't exist at the moment that the HTML is run. It doesn't exist until we click that show classes, show table of classes. <clears throat> so we have to do a slightly different variation of the code we've done before to be able to reference that button that is created dynamically. And then the rest will work the same. So after our show table of classes, we're going to do the same thing where we're setting up this jQuery selector quotes. And we do have a button called delete button, but we can't access it directly yet. We have to do it like this. We have to first say body. So first we sort of have to say at this moment, check the body of the document and then check for this dynamically generated button. So there's no pound sign here. There's no dot here. It's not a class. It's not an ID, obviously. It's the body tag, the whole body of the document. When anywhere on the document, uh, referencing anywhere on the document, but then specifically, we'll have on, click again. You can have on, click. This is technically saying anywhere that you click on the body, do the following. That's not really going to work, because what if someone does click the Save Class button? So here now we have to do this, comma, space, and here in quotes is where, where we're going to reference the BTN, what do we call it, BTN Delete? Uh, right here, B, yeah, BTN Delete. That's a little different. It, it was simply whatever once it's clicked. Now it's 
and you were to click on the body, specifically on the button called delete. And this will work because this can check dynamically generated code, which is what we did back here on line 71. The rest follows the same thing, comma, function, curly braces, And so this, what, what it should do is that once we click that button, just let me confirm myself here. You don't have to do this. Just to triple check this. I've got show classes, delete classes, and I get the pop. Yes, okay, so we're on the right track. What we want is we're going to run a function here, and we'll call this one delete class. Let's run the delete class function once the delete class button is clicked. So we could follow the same technique on the other buttons that we did the uh, other method. We could. We could do the exact same thing. Sure, we have body first, and then we have the specific button right here. We could do the same thing. It's a few extra bytes. So bytes add up. So the other way is just quicker. Next line, then now we need to define what does class delete class actually mean. So function delete class curly braces. Now this was mentioned last class and I and I never mentioned it. Um, we've been putting semicolons at the end of like almost every single line. You might have noticed I have not been putting it at the end of functions. If you look that up, there's this, there's always a big controversy with someone saying you put it and someone saying you don't put semicolon. Uh, either or should work, but notice I haven't been putting semicolons at the end of my functions because it seems that the consensus that I've read online say you don't put a semicolon there and other people will yell at you and say, yes, put a semicolon there. So I think uh, from what I've seen, both will work, but I've just been doing it this way. So now we need to define what does delete class do. The way we'll do this is, well, we need to reference the particular class we're deleting by its ID. The purpose, then, of this is, if I want to delete class BB, I would type here bb and then click delete and it would run the delete class function. Every class is uniquely identified by the CRN column which is underscore id, remember. So I want to, by the click, click of this button, I want to capture what the person typed there to then to be able to, le to delete this row of a class. So inside the function, we're going, to, we're going to create a variable, and we need to check what is in that box. Um, so we'll do dollar the class. That should be giving you the hint we're about to reference something via jQuery. We're about to create a variable, and we're going to populate it with jQuery. Equals. On screen, we've got the object... Um, delete CRN. All right, that's what we called it. ID is delete CRN. So in the quotes here, we're saying uh, pound delete CRN. Give me the value of whatever is in the box, delete CRN, and store it temporarily in, in, the, um, in that variable.
Okay, so this is whatever's being typed into that box, capture it. Then with this, we can do db. dot get so db that's telling us that we're dealing directly with our database now our, our pouch database and we've got a dot get method there's a built-in method in um, in pouch the, the way we're doing it here is to be sure that we're deleting the class that we think that we're deleting we're first sort of basically checking does this does this record does this document exist in the database we're going to try to get a document out of the database named the class and then if we do get it that means it does it does exist so then it's deleted well what if a person is trying to delete a class xyz but it was actually xyzz so we don't want to delete the wrong class so here we're sort of checking are we able to get the class that the user is asking us to delete Specifically, the class that we're trying to delete is dollar the class. That's the that's the name of the unique ID for the class that we're trying to delete. And the syntax we've seen of pouch then is after trying to do something, then we've got comma space function callback. error and result. So that we've been seeing that with um, with with pouch already some some sort of pouch method and then some sort of callback, some error or result. So here's where we're going to then uh, take care of uh, the possible errors and such. Let's now here, let's break this curly brace pair because we were defining the, this callback function at this moment. So let's break that, enter two times. Let's push that down to its own line there. So we'll see it like this. This is just for us to try to get, to try to check if the data exists. To actually delete the data, then we'll do db.remove. Up here, we're trying to get <coughs> the particular document in the database. If it worked, then we get a result, and then this gives us something to work with. So we're going to remove the result. And that has its own function callback with a possible error and a possible result. Okay, here we have again the error or the result, the good or the bad result. Let's break this line also to a couple of, with a couple of enters. So 
notice that's why I say when I teach this, I always do the opening and closing pairs of things because you're going to get lost very easily here. Notice this right here. So we know that this goes back to the get, and this goes back to the remove, and this goes back to the function on top. And here is where I will actually check if, if actual errors happened at this level. Did it actually remove the data of the database or not? If it did remove the data, what I need to do now is, on screen, delete a row. Because in the database, I can delete the data. But that doesn't have anything to do until I specify it to delete the, it from on screen. So if I did delete it from the database, remove that row. Redraw that row. What if I'm trying, again, I'm trying to delete class 007. What if I type 007? Literally, not 007. That's clearly different. So if I'm trying to delete class 007, that's going to be an error. There's no such class as 007, but there's 007. So I wanted to then tell the user there's no such class and to not delete anything. So that's what we're going to do here in if else. If else. Because there could be the error, there could be the result the good, the bad. The bad, the good. We'll start with if result. If it did delete the data from the database then what I want to do within this chunk, the good result. The other possibility is that there was no good result, there was an error. And that's where else will come in. Uh, so what I wanted first for the, for the developer, console output, for us we'll do a little bit of console output into result, show me that result, it'll just simply probably just say okay, but uh, we might have other interesting things. Same sort of thing here under con on the under the error section, console.log error. If there's an error deleting a class, let's see that message. Um, let's test it at this point, see if we're on the right track. It's still not going to change the table yet. We're almost there, but I want to see if we're on the right track here. I'll show you what I mean, how to test it in a moment, but check your code here. And again, it could be problematic if you didn't if you didn't do this stuff right here. This is one of the reasons, a little off topic, this is one of the reasons why we saw on pouch.com that you can write your code as callbacks or promises or that third one because promises in theory is supposed to be less of this I think they call it pyramid code where you've got a lot of these results and there's a little pyramid on the side because you've got all of these little stray closing tags. Promises, it seems that it cuts down a little bit on that, which could be you cut down on, on, some, on some errors. But again, I should have taken spring break to learn a little bit more about promises, but I was having fun. Yes, I promise to learn promises. Yes. Let me just check if mine works, and then, and then I'll show you my code. So let's see. If it works, it's supposed to work like this, hopefully. I'm going to show classes, and I know that I have cl class C in my case. I'm going to type a C there, and I'm going to click Delete Class. Let's check my console output. Object OK True. I did delete class C. I'm going to try to delete class Cat. Clearly, I have no CRN Cat, so I'll click Delete Class Cat. And it says, uh, error, type error, cannot read property ID of undefined. It, the, I don't have that class. You know, if I'm trying to delete capital X, delete class, get that error. So there's my console output. Again, it's not going to update it. It's not going to update it on screen yet, but if it worked, it'll say, OK, true. If it didn't, it'll probably give you some, some kind of error. Let's pause at this point. <coughs> There's my code so far. Did I'll show you... classes. Does it show up anymore? Show sure. yeah. classes. <coughs> the button show classes doesn't show up anymore? No, the button doesn't show up anymore. 
Okay, whenever any of the JavaScript goes wrong, it'll just automatically then deactivate all of the JavaScript. So that's why it's going to speed on the other side. All that original that template is all okay. It was working fine until I had to make this part. Let's look at that part. So SQL logs. Okay, so it takes hold of it. And Because I think you're going to have classes. Okay, they have the same thing. They're not the same set of classes. Yeah, there's something going on here. It's just not going to stay in class anymore. Because yeah, this might mean what happens sometimes is let's say you might have had your mouse there and without realizing you pressed the letter and then you just you didn't see it and then it, it, it may type something wrong. And
Now I noticed something here and no one else noticed it, so that's a demerit for everyone. Um, this is placeholder, not place. <laughs> it is placeholder. It should be placeholder to display a placeholder. So let's see there, show, cl uh, show classes, there we go. Placeholder. So notice I refreshed my screen and it did show me the new version of my table. Okay, I'm going to delete class X. Delete class. Console tells me it worked, but on screen it didn't. If I refresh and show classes, it's, it is gone. Now we want to do that programmatically. We want to refresh that table so that now the table doesn't have that row. And this will be easy because we've got a method to display our table. We've got a function. We've got the show classes function. The purpose of show classes is to show the classes, the version of our table <coughs> with our database. So all we need to do after in the else portion, all we need to do in the in the if portion. The positive result after console output is call the show classes function again. That's the function that draws the table, basically. So here, we draw the table with our new data, with one less class. Now let's try it. Save it and run it. Delete a class, and right away it should then redraw the table in the blink of an eye, and you've got the new version of the table with one less row. That's the whole point of using functions, because then we can reuse them um, for great results. Let's see. So I'm going to refresh my code. I've got these classes. I don't want class D anymore. Delete. Delete. Now also notice what it did. It cleared out my box there because there was a clear box. Um, so now let's say I'm trying to delete class Q, delete class. I do get some sort of error in the console, but that's not a very good error to show the user. So, um, so we need to give some, uh, some user output here under else. I want to, on the user output here, let's make it obvious that the person made a mistake, so we'll, we'll add an alert here, a simple alert pop-up box. When we get this back into our app, we can create a much nicer alert box, but for the moment we'll use just the native web browser alert. And we will say we're gonna we're trying to say the class XYZ doesn't exist. Try again. So we'll say the CRN We're assuming that whatever the person is typing into this box is the CRN. So I want to say the CRN you're typing doesn't exist. The class of the CRN doesn't exist. In, you mean a message in HTML that displays on screen? That's, that's another way, sure. 
I'm just showing different possibilities here because the way I want to do this is that it pops up to show, to really show the person it didn't work. To really make it obvious. So, um, let's say then plus. Uh, the class, that's our variable that is holding what the person typed in that box. So if someone's trying to delete class cat, it should pop up that says the CRM cat. Doesn't exist. Try again. And then we need our, our little spacing and such, of course. See that I tried to delete cat. There is no such ID in my database called cat. So it triggers else because it's either error or result. Error happens when there's no class with, a, with that ID. And the pop up then, the CRN cat doesn't exist. Let's say I'm trying to delete, you know, class again. Uh, 007, delete class. The CRN 007 doesn't exist. Try again. Just any user, any user message. Now, uh, I'm trying to type in a class. It's the wrong class. Sometimes we, we get sort of this, like, uh, color blindness of pop-ups. Uh, even though it popped up right in our face. I clicked it, I'm not reading that, I just click OK. And then I'm clicking it, I'm not reading it, I click OK. And it's still the same wrong class. So not only do I want to pop up to say, hey, that class doesn't exist, I want to delete what they typed in there, because it doesn't exist. I don't want them to be blind to that message and just click OK. Because some of us are just, you see a pop-up, you click OK without reading. I, went, I then wanted to delete what they wrote there. I wanted to clear that, that box. So. We've got our console output, we've got the alert to show them. Um, and then next line, I'm still in else. Next line, then we need to blank out that box. That box is... Uh, that box is... Uh, let's see, like this, the class dot val. Let me just double check something here. Okay, so we're writing line 85. Okay, I want to do, I want to cancel out what the person is trying to write on screen. Remember, we've got the box delete CRM, and up on line 76, we've said whatever the person has typed at that moment, give me its value, 
and put it into that variable. Down here I'm saying, okay, let's go back to that box where the person tried to type something and let's not only can we use val to retrieve what's in that box, but we can also populate that box with something. And here I'm just putting a double quotes so that it, it's empty. Take out what the person wrote and just empty that box. So val can retrieve a value from an input box and set a value of an input box. And that's different than placeholder, actually. Placeholder is like invisible. It doesn't put any value into the input box. With val, it actually does put a value into input box. Technically here it would be null or empty or whatever. And we're going to use this trick a little bit later once we do the update classes. Because right now, it is a little cumbersome in that the way I've got it set up is a person has to type the name of the class to delete it. So here I need to type at hash dollar at. I need to type it exactly as is or it won't work. And that's a little bit on purpose. I don't want people to accidentally to delete a class. If I simply had the ability click here, delete, that still might cause people to delete too quickly. So I'm making it a little obvious, making it a little hard, that is, to actually delete a class. It's deleting it, it's clearing it, I have to type it to actually delete it. Are you sure? Because once it's done, it's done. There's no undo. That requires a whole bunch of other coding to do undo. So right now, it just does it if you delete. In a moment, when we do the update class, I don't want to have to type all of these things to, do, to update them. We will do it that when I click a button for this class, here, it will automatically populate my fields, and then I'll just change them and save them. For the moment, I am making it a little bit cumbersome to delete a class, because it's dangerous. That <coughs> data's gone. You're not going to be able to really bring it back without more programming. Anyway, did that work for you? The, the, the point here is that if you're trying to delete a class that doesn't exist, tell them, and then also empty the box. I told them close the box, and then it deletes it back to the placeholder. So that's the functionality of deleting a class. Any questions? We're going to go on to updating a class, but any questions so far? Um, file, and this is no. Where? <laughs> what line? Uh, the last one. 80, uh, 85? Yeah. Value inside there instead of quote unquote. Put it no. Um, yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Good question. Looks like it does the same thing. So we can either put the string an empty string, or we can put null, not a string, and then it'll nullify it. <coughs> yes? In this database, when it deletes a record, does it just change the flag as an inactive record, or is it actually physically removed the record from the database? I think it just changes the flag to say it doesn't, ex it doesn't exist anymore, quote unquote, because what we can do is we can, we can check that. Remember, we can go over here to our yeah, resources. And we go over here back to index by sequence. I still have all of this data here. I still have 14 things in my database, even though I've only got these five visible. So you are going to see here, deleted, true. So technically the data is still there. It's just that it's been set with deleted, true. So conceivably, this is how you could do undo, because the data is still there, but then you just have to retrieve it change its flag back to deleted false, I guess, and you could bring it back. Because if you get a sync with your, with your server, you need to know whether or not to sync this, this contingent down. Exactly. So this could, this could keep it uh, tidy because you don't want to synchronize all that dead data. Put it back to the database on the server as deleted and then you keep it synchronized. So, um, that's what we're seeing. 
all of our um, remember we don't spend a lot of time on this screen but this is in the resources tab of the console and here's where we can see the data in a raw in a bit of a raw way in our browser so any questions let's talk about uh, updating the data any, any other questions at this point yeah um, the loop is working under the for statement right here. Explain that a bit. Is that what you're asking? How was the for working? No, The buttons that are appearing like down here and here. This uh, this button down here it checks the button doesn't exist if I if I load my document at this point the button doesn't exist once I click show classes the JavaScript creates it in order for us for this button to be active that's why we did line seventy four where we're saying <coughs> when a person clicks anywhere on the body but specifically on the BTN delete now we can see that that button exists. It can find that button now at that point because it didn't exist. Then when we click this delete class, runs the function, and here we're saying, okay, there's an input field, let's get its value, store it here. And once we have that value, we go through the process of getting it from the database to see if it exists. And if it does exist, then let's remove it. And then we do the rest. Okay. Did that answer the question? Um, the looping back is happening here on the four. The real, the only real loop that's happening is right here. When you uh, run the code for the first time, it looks at everything and then it's done. But this is the part that it actually loops because it has to look at the, the first item in the database and keep looping until we get to the end of the database. So that's the part that actually does loop. Um, maybe okay, we'll, we'll talk a little later. Yes? After line. At the end? Yeah, instead of dollar sign, dollar, yeah, it's just a dollar, dollar in the class. Variable is the same, right? Variable dollar class. In this case here, uh, dollar class of variable. No. Oh, the up here? Yeah, the whole, the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole, the whole fun. Yeah, no, I've been mean, talking about this part. This part replaced yeah. by dollar the class of the word. Um, because you have said the value, value of I did try it and it didn't because technically it's a value. It's saying give me the value in that object and oh, store okay. it there. Oh, right. If I didn't if I didn't do val, then that object would be stored in the class and then I could reference it as the class at the value. Okay. Okay. Question number seventy four. Okay, suppose uh instead of button delete you get some kind of a class, because you more than one class, mm -hmm. and you wanted it to uh, limit it to a bit of a different name. We're actually going to do that in just a moment when we edit our classes, because that's exactly what's going to happen. When we're going to edit the class, well, we've got three cells to worry about. This first cell, second cell, and third cell, which all relate to one object. So we will have to deal with that, because we're going to have to deal now with classes, because all of these are TD, TD, TD. Not exactly classes, but all of them are the same object. Well, how do we reference the third object or the second or the first? Which we'll do right now. All right, so let's say now we want to actually um, update classes. We're going to need to do on screen for the user something similar. We're going to make three input boxes. We're going to set it up so that those fields get populated for the user when they click. Uh, but we need to display some boxes on screen very similar to delete. So let's back up to line 71 and give yourself a new line 72. We're going to add another hr. Remember plus equals to keep adding to the string. 
So we'll have another simple dividing line. And we'll keep adding to the string here. And this will be a bit of a bit of typing here on one long line. We can break it up, but we have to be careful about breaking it up. So I'm going to put it in one long line. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is <coughs> we're going to we're going to do we're going to create a we're going to create a div. This will be for us a little bit later. This will make sense eventually when we get this to a point. It, it's it's going to look kind of ugly, so I'm setting it up for the moment so that it'll look nicer eventually. But I'm going to create a div here because I want to display a couple of quick columns. But for the moment, we'll just call that div. Um, this will be a class. And we'll call that... Um, if to call. Eventually we're going to use some CSS. We might as well write it now, but eventually we're going to write some CSS to make a two column layout. So this div will be divided into two columns. It's a class, so that means we can reuse the CSS code throughout our project, because we might want to have a double column layout more than once. That's why it's a class. Then we're going to put in two div pairs meaning there's one div there, and we'll do another div pair. So there's a larger outside container which will define both of our columns. Then there will be the left column and the right column, because the idea is you're going to have um, the, the input boxes of the name of the class, the title of the class, the instructor class, the notes, whatever, along nicely lined up on one column and then a button on the right that then says save or update or whatever. <coughs> so on this first div, uh, let's give this also a class because eventually we will define it via um, via CSS div left call. This is the left column of this div. What is the spelling? Capital L, capital C. Capital T, capital C. Guess what we're going to call the next div on the side over here? Right. Div right call. So we can, of course, call these things whatever we want, and hopefully we're calling them things that make sense. Class div right call. So there's a left column, a right column. Kind of like this, you know, the sign-in sheet here. you got this left column where everyone puts their name here. You've got a right column where everyone puts the time. We're doing something like that here. On the left column, it's simply going to be a button. So go back into here. It's unfortunately going to be very easy to get lost, and it would be nice to break it up into multiple lines, but we can't break it up unless we do the plus, space plus, that sort of thing. So here we're just going to bear with it for a moment. We're creating a button. There's going to be one button on the left column. The button will need some text, uh, which I guess we'll just call it update. This will update a class. We're editing a class, either the instructor's name or whatever, and when we press this button, it'll update it. Well, in order for us, of course, to access the button via JavaScript, it needs some sort of identifier. So we will add here an ID btn update For the moment, we're not quite done yet, but for the moment, let's see if this displays like how we want. Save it and run it. Click Show Classes, and below the Delete section, you should have a, a new divider and one button. Let's see if mine works. 
virtual classes. So you see I'm kind of doing the opposite. I've got one input box, one button. I'm going to do one button and three input boxes, putting it kind of backwards for visual interest. But that's what the code is so far. Again, it's one long line. I can't quite really show it all at once. And we're not quite done yet either. That's the code so far. You've got a whole div that wraps the whole thing. You've got a div of left call, which has the button. And in a moment, we'll do div of right call, which has the three input fields. I'll do a break in a moment so I can share my code, but we're almost there. So I want to add now to the to the right column input an input box of type text Type text, which would be nice to put a placeholder, and we will need an ID. Type text placeholder. That's just the, the CRN number, so whatever, 2257H or J. And that needs an ID. This will be update CRN. So I'm going to do three placeholders in total, or three input boxes. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste that to save some effort. But it's input, type text, some placeholder, and some ID. So you can do some copy and paste there, or retype it. copy that and paste it right after itself and so it's going to be another input type text placeholder this time is the class name and ID is update class update class title Actually, we'll call it update title because internally in our in our database we're calling it title, right? We're calling it ID title and instructor. And we need one more input type text placeholder um, to Smith, and that's update inst. is a really long line. It took me over to column 327. Check if mine works, then we'll take a break and I'll give you my code. Again, it's not going to look that pretty yet, but the point is that now you've got the button of update in its own div, and then you've got the spot where the person will type the CRN, where they will type the class name and they will type the instructor's name and then when they will see that after the break if I click on this class bond these three will auto populate with what they clicked on which with the row they clicked on and then whoops I misspelled it bond so I will read I will spell bond properly click update and then it'll update it in the database and on screen we're getting toward that so let's take our break I'm going to put my code in the folder. It is a pretty long line. I kind of recommend look at my code instead of seeing it up here, but I'm going to put my code into the network folder and then we'll take a break until 8.35.
So if you get a copy of my code in the folder, it's the latest version, and if you can see it, here's a piece of my code up there. We'll be back at 8. It should look like this. If you've got your screen stretched out, show classes, it'll look like that side by side. Right here. Or if it's kind of tall, something like that.